What if making friends in your 20s didn't have to be as hard as you think it does? Because I want to put you guys on. Okay? Thank me later. And no, this is not an ad. I wish it was because I know Bumble has coin, but it's not an ad. I'm just here to help you guys out because I am having a good time. So why not share the wealth? <laughs> Hello, besties. Today we're talking about exactly that. Besties. Friends. New friends, new relationships. I want to talk about Bumble BFF. There's a lot of people that want to use that app but don't know how to like navigate through it. So I may as well just make a dedicated video on Bumble BFF and just put you guys on and let you know my experiences with it and how to make new friends on there. Okay, so Bumble BFF, if you guys didn't know, is the app Bumble, the dating app where you swipe with a man or a woman or whatever. And on this app, the woman has to message the man first after matching, something like that. I don't, I don't know, I've never actually used the dating site. So when you download that app, there are different modes. There's a biz mode, which is like, I think like networking purposes, dating mode, and BFF mode. That's where I'm at, I'm, I'm on BFF mode. So Bumble BFF is literally a dating app, but for friends. I don't know if there's a male side or not, I have no idea. I just know that on the female side, you swipe, you make friends, and it's all girls that you can swipe through and decide who you think you'll be compatible with. It shows you everything, like it shows you the sign, whether they drink or smoke, what schools they went to, all that stuff, and then they have like profiles, they can link their Instagram, it's pretty cool. So I've been on Bumble BFF for, I think like a year and a half on and off. I delete it and then I reinstall it and then I delete it and reinstall it. The way that I used it in the past was like have a bunch of conversations, click with a bunch of girls and then never talk again. It was very stupid. I realized that I wasn't making the most of the app. I'm like, what's the point of me being on this app when I'm just gonna have conversations die out and then delete the app and reinstall it two months later when I'm like bored or want new friends. It was, it was just so silly the way that I was using it. So I'm gonna give you guys tips on how to actually make friends on there and just explain how it is, if you guys don't know. <sighs> Again, I wish I was sponsored by Bumble because this this feels like an ad. Okay, so Bumble BFF. Let's get on my phone and show you guys the app. I'm gonna show you guys my profile. Ooh, this is so weird. Okay, so profile. Let's see my profile, I'm gonna show you guys. So Ashley, 26, digital creator at YouTube because that's my job. I'm going to change this picture because it's blurry. It's a film shot. But I thought I looked cute, it was given body, you know, my weave looked good, I look cute, I'm smiling. You always wanna have pictures where you're smiling and showing personality because you don't wanna be intimidating. So have your main picture be like a picture of you like with your cute little smile. Then this is what I wrote. Free-spirited, extroverted, introvert. Yes, I could have just written ambivert, but I don't consider myself an ambivert. I consider myself an introvert who's... <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Even before quarantine, I never left my house, and making friends isn't the easiest for my bedroom. I love deep spiritual talks, wine nights, cooking, and laughing. I love a good night in, but I'm also down for whatever. Open to all kinds of people. Then I have my little preferences, what I do, my zodiac sign, Aquarius, spiritual, blah, blah, blah. Cute little pic of me. I'm gonna change these pictures. I'm not feeling them anymore. Qual favorite quality in a person, open-minded. Mm -hmm. Picture of me at the Daniel Caesar concert, great concert. Um, some curly hair so that they know I'm versatile. <laughs> the three things that make a friendship great are meaningful conversations, loyalty, and similar humor. Yes, 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 period, you already know. Then I have another cute pic of me. This one I felt like was a little intimidating, so I put it like towards the end. Then I put, I quote too much from TikTok. If you know, you know, because TikTok inside jokes are all fun and stuff. So like, I figured that might be like a good opener. Then I have a flashback Mary photo at a bar from a couple years back. And, ooh, I think it's a really good idea to put your Spotify linked to it so that people can see like, oh, she listened to Janae, Doja Cat, Frank Ocean. Like, I fuck with her, you know? Like, we both have Janae as our main or whatever. So that's my profile. Then there is my conversation. Ooh, ooh, that's a little private. <laughs> I'm, okay, so this is why I'm on that. I'm looking for black girlfriends because I feel like I don't have any super, super close black girlfriends. I do have a lot of black friends, but like, I just want like a bestie. I just want like a close friend I can really relate to. I am exclusively swiping on black girls. I think all these girls look lovely and fun and I'll be back on the app for them later. But right now I'm, I'm, I have a specific goal in mind, you know? I feel like the app is pretty common sense. Swipe left if you don't want to match, swipe right if you want to match. And from the matching, what now? I feel like that's when people get really confused. So I'm gonna get into 
how to make a conversation, go to a hangout, and how to go through the hangout. I'm gonna tell you guys about my Bumble BF updates. I've had a couple dates already and they've been good. Let's chat. When it comes to starting conversations, okay. The way that I do it is I pretend I'm the guy. Let's say, let's say this is a straight relationship, male, female, right? And the man is typically the pursuer, the one who asks to hang out, the one who starts conversation, and the one who follows up and makes second plans until the girl's comfortable enough to start reciprocating that. Any good man is like that. Any man that's not like that is not worth my time. In Bumble BFF, I pretend I'm a guy. I just carry that male energy and I take initiative because I'm on there because I want to make friends, not because I want to have small talk on an app and then ghost you four days later, you know what I mean? So. What I do and what you should do is pretend you're the male in a straight relationship and you're pursuing your besties. So what this means is you see a profile and you start scanning it. Ooh, she likes Doja Cat. Oh, okay, she likes whatever. Or, oh, she took a picture in front of this spot. I'll give you an example. Let's say I see a girl and she's like posed up in front of this donut shop in Toronto. I'll message her and be like, oh my God, girl, did you try those donuts? I've seen them on TikTok, they look so good. And then she will tell me if she's tried them. And then I tell her, ooh, I'm a foodie. And then we chat, 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 hang out, we'll get there. What I'm trying to say is find something on their profile that sparks your interest and run with it. And if there's nothing on there that you can really like pick at and you know use for conversation, A, I mean, they need to up their profile game because that is, come on, <laughs> come on. But B, just come up with something new and ask a question. Let me find one of my openers. Okay, so for I'll give you an example. One girl talked about The Bachelor and I was like, oh my God, like I just watched The Bachelor. What do you think about Matt James? So that's an example of my last strategy. But again, so let's say there's nothing on there. All you have to do is message her, hey girl, how's it going? And then she'll reply. And then when, when she asks you, how are you? Say something like, I'm good. Just been enjoying the summer, day drinking and eating blah, blah, blah. And then she'll be like, ooh, that sounds fun. You know what I mean? Don't be given dry ass replies like, good, thank you. No, you need to be like, I'm enjoying the weather, finally started jogging again. I'm doing this, blah, 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 going for late night drives, drinking bubble tea. Give her something to work with so she can be like, ooh, I love bubble tea. What's your favorite bubble tea? And you can be like, I like the Thai milk tea. And then you just go from there. Don't be dry, give something to work with because girls will latch onto that. You just gotta give them that, what's that, the hook? Is that the expression? I don't know, you know what I mean. So that's how you keep a conversation kind of flowing. Okay, so you have a conversation going and now you're kind of sick of it because you don't know the girl and you don't have that much to talk about on an app. What I suggest doing is getting the number and making plans to meet in person. So the way that I do this is I just reply on the app. I usually forget to reply because I just don't open that app every day. So I'll end up saying like, hey girl, I'm so sorry, I'm barely on this app. What's your phone number? I'll text you. There you go. Or you can ask for the Instagram. I'm personally not on Instagram right now, so I've been asking for numbers. But if I was on Instagram, I probably would just do IG because then you get to see their profile, you can reply to their stories, keep up with them in that way, you know? So with that, I just say this. I'll give you an example of what I said. I didn't reply to someone by accident because I suck at replying. So I just said this. Hey girl, I'm the worst with Bumble because my notifications are off. I told her that I had just gone on a Bumble date so and she asked me how it went and I was like, my Bumble date went super well, gave me faith in the app. If you're ever interested in meeting up, let me know because I'd definitely be down to do another COVID safe BFF date. I find there's so much small talk on this app and I'd rather click in person. I'm in Toronto by the way. So that's what I say. I just say there's a lot of small talk on the app and I think it'd be really cool if we could just connect in person because I find that easier. And anybody that's on that app is gonna be down. They're not on that app to just like flirt and like send pictures. They're on that app to make friends. So when you take the initiative and they matched you, they're gonna be down. They matched you for a reason. They're on the app for a reason. So if you're feeling insecure, if you're feeling shy, if you feel like, ooh, is that too much? It's not. They're, they're wishing that you will do it because they don't wanna do it. it. Like they don't want to take that initiative. So be that like alpha male <laughs> and Take that initiative and be like, hey girl, like, let's meet up. I feel like I can't really connect online. We should probably just link in person and see how we feel. And don't put too much pressure on it. Like, just go show up and see if you vibe in person. So now in person, what happens on a Bumble day? Let's talk about that. Is it awkward? Yes. The first five minutes? <laughs> the first five minutes. 
are so awkward. I will not lie to you. If you can get through that first five minutes, you're you're good. It's but those first. I'm gonna say three to five minutes are a little weird. It's weird because it's such a new thing. You both know it's weird, but you both know you wanna make a friend. It's a date, but it's not a date. You know each other's names, but you don't because you've never met. You feel like you've met, but you haven't because you just talked online. Um, you're also aware of like everyone around you. If, you. if you have social anxiety, like you're aware of people like listening in on your conversation and like that's kind of weird to deal with, so yeah. I would say those, those first three to five minutes are the only awkward part for me. It's just introducing yourselves and not knowing what to say next because she's not your friend. You don't have anything to catch up on. So it's like, what do you say? When I, oh God, let me, you know what? Let me just give you a reenactment of how it goes. Hey girl, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm Ashley, your name's Samantha, right? Yeah, Samantha. It's nice to finally meet you. You too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what? <laughs> sorry, sorry, you go, you go. Okay, how was your trip down here? It was good. It wasn't bad. It took a bus and then an Uber and it was pretty quick, like maybe like 20 minutes. Cool. Yeah. Should we just, yeah. we'll go to the spot, right? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. <sighs> Do you see what I mean? It's like one of those where you're like, mm, we have nothing to say to each other. On my first Velma BFF date, we just talked about like what we were about to do. And I was like, you ever been to that park? Have you ever tried this bubble tea? Have you? And like, it was fine. Like, it wasn't her that was awkward. It was probably me. But it was also the situation, you know? On the second one, we went to go grab coffee. So we had to stand in line. And it was just kind of like, what are you going to get? <laughs> what are you going to get? <laughs> it's, it's a little odd. I won't lie. But... After that, they both went so well. Let me tell you how they went. Okay, so the first Bumble BFF date I went on, it was actually, we met up like outside a mall and I just said like, I'll just come grab you out front so that we can drive to the um, the park nearby because it was a long hour's walk and I was not trying to do all that that day. So I picked her up, she gets in my car, we introduce each other and we have a little moment and it's like, Ooh. and then we go get some bubble tea. Once we get the bubble tea and we drive to the park and we like put the blanket out, Vibes were great. I think that we knew we were going somewhere, so we couldn't really get into conversation because we knew like we had a mission, like go to the bubble tea spot, get the bubble tea, drive to the park, find a spot to sit. Once you're sitting, it's like, oh, okay, this is chill. Now we can chat, you know? But up until that moment, it was kind of like a little off um, because you don't know each other. Once we get to the park, we're sitting with our bubble teas. I brought a big ass blanket. I brought my tarot cards, you know. We start chatting, great conversation, very similar. We're both into the same things. We are both open-minded, good conversation flowing. I think it's always great to talk about past relationships and current relationships because it brings out a vulnerable side of someone. And when you can both be vulnerable, it's you're gonna click a little better. So that's always a great thing, talking about relationships, talking about your past, asking each other questions, where you go to school, where you blah, blah, blah. And then that opens up so many more doors. Was not awkward at all. Great vibe. Spent a couple hours together and then dro drove her home. Great, great, great time. Next Bumble date, I won't lie to you, I did the same thing. <laughs> I brought my blanket, I brought my tarot cards, and I was like, let's go hit up a cafe or something. So we grabbed some coffee. No, we grabbed mimosa. Okay, we grabbed coffee and then we grabbed mimosa. So we got a little, I got a little tipsy. I don't know if it hit her. And then we sat at the park and we just talked. This time we were downtown. So there was more to look at. We did a long walk together. We just walked for a long time, got to know each other. Was not awkward at all. Great vibes, super, super chill girl. And I would see both of them again. Like uh, it just hit up the first Bumble BFF date. I'm gonna hit up the second one a few days from now probably. And try and maintain these relationships because honestly, I've never been the person to take the initiative. So now that I am, I 
I can appreciate all the people that did with me in the past because I never did. And now I'm like, damn, like you guys really followed up with me and checked in on me and like took made the effort to like be friends before we could actually be friends. And now I'm like, mm, this is a lot of work, but it's, it's worth it because you make friends. So both dates went great. 10 out of 10 recommend using Bumble BFF, but only if you're gonna use it properly. Don't be on that app for small talk. Use it the way that I use it. Carry that male energy and, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean. And do what you gotta do to get yourself a date. But yeah, all in all, I definitely like Bumble BFF. I will be seeing my Bumble BFF soon. I think I have plans with one of them next week. So who knows, if we like get close and stuff and like we have a good friendship, then you might see her on the channel one day and I'll probably let you guys know, hey, this is the Bumble BFF girl I talked about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really wanna hear your guys' thoughts on making friends as an adult. How do you guys make friends as an adult once you leave high school and college? What is your strategy? Please share it with me. I would love to know how you're making friends, whether it's Bumble BFF, whether it is whatever please tell me i've mentioned before people don't really engage with my content and i love to get you guys to engage so we can talk it helps my channel grow a lot and it also helps me like get to know you guys and we get to know each other so so let me know i want to hear about your friendships and how you make them as an adult because it's hard it's really hard and i'm going to do a whole video on that one day but i hope you guys enjoyed the video i will see you next time and thanks for watching